remember that person we saved from the bad guys? Think we ought to go question if she has any intel on them? Oh my god! That's the smartest idea we've ever had! I can't believe we didn't think about it before. Hello, I'm a completely random new character who will in no way betray you. We, we don't, don't believe, believe you. you. Fair enough. On to the betrayal then. Okay. Yeah. Um, where to even begin? It feels weird to say, but the show does feel like it's hitting its stride having the Scooby gang split up running two storylines separately but paralleled also seems to have tightened up the pacing of the episode and keeps things moving along this feels like the format they really needed the earlier episodes to be in, where you have two characters off in one direction while another two head elsewhere i'm a little disappointed that so far, all the splits have been Latka plus Carlos and Mary plus John. I wish earlier in the season we had had more opportunities for various interactions. We got hints of this with Carlos and Ada on the stakeout and Carlos and John at the hospital. Just so many combinations and character interactions we could have had that it looks like we're going to run out of time for. So let's go over the storyline separately. Carlos and Latka were pretty good. While it really pushes believability to have Latka always have the answer solution to a problem, well, this time it kind of works since the writing did call back to her earlier encounter with Ada's son, the half Jin. That's a nice bit of continuity there, and I thought that was pretty well done. Of course, I still have a little bit of fanboyishness toward Bridget Reagan, so yeah, my heart broke watching her act out the trauma of a survivor of all these shenanigans. That's what I was always on about with the mothership. I didn't want to look at it every time or every week, but Supernatural, and by extension the Winchesters, had this very unique avenue by which to examine trauma and recovery and surviving in ways that a lot of shows don't. This is why I was always, always wish the mothership had done with Claire. Again, let me stress that I don't need Roxy showing up every week talking about her depression and troubles, but I am thrilled that this week, this episode, we get a chance to watch her work through what has been done to her. And I really thought Bridget put in a strong performance here and she does amazing work selling this mini arc they have her character go through in these 40 minutes. While I think it was weak having her challenges be tied somewhat to Carlos's issue, it kind of makes him seem childish and petty that again he just loves too much instead of giving his whole story a bit more meat. Like some past hunt or mishap that really wounded his ability to have a steady relationship. Then you could have him use that trauma to connect with Roxy and let them grow together as characters. Really, if you think about it, it would have been far stronger writing had Latka been the one with relationship problems. I mean, we know from an earlier episode that she has some trauma involving her father. Given that and Tony's nature as a half monster, you can easily see how Latka would have possible reservations of becoming real serious with Tony. Though, as an aside, the revelation that they're having a long distance relationship through dream dating, that's a nice touch of world building. I fully endorse and celebrate the show using that kind of creativity. I anyway, had the writers had Latka be the hesitant one, possibly researching how to wipe her memories of Tony to try and get over him, and then applying those lessons here in this instance, I just think that's a much richer vein for the show to tap into and examine their characters. Monsters of the Week are always best when they are a reflection, a chance for us to examine aspects and facets of our main characters. We get a little bit of that here. I'd grade that effort at about a C, maybe a B minus if I'm in a good mood. It, it still just needed a few rewrites to really perfect it. This brings us to Mary and John's storyline. How to explain this. Okay, imagine I sat down to eat and someone brings me a really great piece of meatloaf. I can admit that 
the meatloaf is perfectly good and edible and that the cook did a fabulous job. But as far as red meat's concerned, I would have really, really preferred a good steak. I say all that so you understand me when I say Mary and John's story with Jack Wilcox was fine. There's no real flaws with it, but I really wish there had been something different. Again, I want to stress, the execution was fine. The mystery was solid. Hunt for Clues logical made a lot of sense. I liked that a golem reappeared, and it does seem appropriate for a mole man to have one. But let's just be honest, by now, Supernatural has done the prospective ally betrays the main cast so many times, it's more of a surprise if the new guy remains a legit friend. Do you remember Gordon? One of the reasons I loved Gordon is that he never betrayed the Winchesters. They just ended up having a divergence of viewpoints which drove a rift between them and eventually turned friends into enemies. I was really hoping in this episode that Jack here was going to be the Winchester's version of Gordon. Heck, I wanted to see the show tackle an actual debate on methods and morality. Like what if the two stories intersected? What if instead of a mad scientist plan about mind swapping, Jack needed a few more human experiments to build his anti-accreta weapon? The Scooby gang is of course opposed to it, but what if Roxy volunteered? What if she wanted, was even eager to help in whatever way she could to save the day? Remember when the boys had that debate? Back in season three's Just in Bello, where they refused to sacrifice a girl to save the day, even though that girl was willing? Yeah, that was compelling television. Definitely one of the best episodes of that season. And since the Winchesters have a longer time clock, you don't even have to solve that debate in this episode. You could expand it to one or two in this season and make something really interesting. Again, I want to stress that this plot line in the episode was fine. The mad scientist trope is a fun classic for a reason, and the writers execute it well enough. It just feels repetitive. Remember Cuthbert Sinclair from season 9 of The Mothership? Jack just seemed like a slight variation on him. I really wanted them to do something newer, or something more thought-provoking. Although, I am now wondering, why couldn't a golem win a fight against the Akrita? We haven't been shown how they're indestructible. Could a Gollum pull one apart piece by piece, or could enough Akrita gang up to bring the Gollum down, and then would they be- This part? The Akrita and their plot to frame John? I like that a lot. This scene was very well done. This is one time I think they made a definite improvement over what the Leviathan did to the boys back in episode 706 slash fiction. So yeah, very into this episode, absolute perfection. This is where, again, my grading of the episode is going to divert. For me personally, given my disappointment, I would give this around a two or three shells. But from an objective standpoint, it's a four shell outing. The writing is pretty solid with no major mishaps. The storyline's well paced and executed. The guest stars and regulars also all brought a much better game this time around. Grading this from what did the episode creators want to accomplish and how well they achieved that goal, yeah, it's a it's a four out of five. I still really do appreciate the quality of what we were given, even if it's not exactly what we wanted. We're in the home stretch now with only a few episodes remaining. Hope you'll join me next time to see what the rest of the season has in store. Mm -hmm.